And that God always remembers the good we have done and always forgives us all our sins, we now pray, asking God to gather Paddy to himself. Lord, in our grief, we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who opens his ears to all who call? Listen now to our prayers for your servant Paddy, whom you have called out of this world. Lead him to your kingdom of light and peace and count him among your saints in glory. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Lord, uh, Lord Jesus, with confidence and faith in the power of your cross and resurrection, we now turn to you. Risen Lord, pattern of life, Lord have mercy. Promise and image of what we shall be, Lord have mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy all sin and death, Lord have mercy. Word of God, who delivered us from the fear of death, Lord have mercy. Crucified Lord, forsaken in death, raised in glory, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who brings rest to our souls, give your eternal peace to Paddy forever, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, bless those who mourn Paddy's loss. Bless all his family, friends and relatives who have gathered now to pray for him. Lord God, you are attentive to the voice of our pleading. Let us find in your Son Jesus comfort in our sadness, certainty in our doubt and courage to live through all the trials of life. Make our faith strong through Christ our Lord. Amen. Tell a rest, friend to him, O Lord, and every virtue of light shine upon him. May you rest in peace. And with the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
gates of paradise, that he may return to that homeland where there is no death, where eternal joy endures. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. So I welcome you all to our Mass now this morning for, for Paddy Flavin. And before we proceed with our celebration of the Eucharist, the family uh, would like to present a few Simple, simple symbols of uh, Paddy's life. So his grandchildren are going to bring those symbols and Father John will receive them there and place them. So first of all, Bree, James and Robert each carry a tractor, a cow and a sod of turf. These symbolise his love for farming and the many long hours he spent saving hay, cutting turf and tending to his cattle. Paddy also worked with Telecom and p &T, as it was then, and Joy carries a phone, which represents his lifelong career with them, and he loved enjoy, and enjoyed the chat in all the houses he was in and out of in his work for p and Liam carries a deck of cards. Paddy enjoyed his evenings out playing cards, especially 45, with his friend Dee Dee in Ned Lynch's pub. And Tina carries an image of his beloved dog, Lady, man's best friend. Paddy always had a dog by his side, and Lady has been part of the family for the last 16 years. Thanks very much. Now, as we offer this Mass for the happy repose of Paddy's soul, we pause, as always, for a moment to acknowledge our sinfulness, our need of God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have set a limit to this present life so as to open up an entry into eternity, we humbly beseech you that by the grace of your mercy you may command the name of your servant Paddy to be inscribed in the Book of Life. Through all Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to the Word of God. And our first reading will be read by Eileen O'Connell and uh, Fiona and Michael will have, give us the responsorial psalm. And the second reading will be read by James McCoy. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. My life has already been poured away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me that day. 
and not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. The Lord will rescue me from all evil attempts on me and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> stand to greet the gospel. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead, but anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Please be seated. First of all, on, on behalf of Father John and, and Father Joe, who is away these days, uh, and on my own behalf, and indeed on behalf of the parish community, I would like to extend our deepest sympathy to Paddy, you, Paddy's family, to you, his wife, Margaret, his daughters, Marguerite, Brida, Marie, Eileen, and Jackie, his son, Pat. Pat and Marie are in the United States and unable to be with us uh, in these very strange times we are in, but I hope you are both picking us up all those miles away through the wonders of modern technology. You are very much in our thoughts uh, today as we gather here. Sympathy also to his, I think it's 18 grandchildren, some of them also are spread across the world and also his great-grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins, and so forth. You, Pat and Marie, are, uh, will be uh, aware that we are allowed only 25 people at this funeral mass today, but neighbours and friends find a way of paying their respects, and they have done so. Paddy was 81 years of age, and we thank God, first of all, for the gift of his life. Margaret, we are particularly conscious of your pain after all those years together. I was looking up the book on the 30th of September, 1961, having stolen him from broad birth, you walked up this church and committed yourself for life having brought him out of his beloved Broadford to Kilachtin, where you reared a fine and good family. That was the call you both took on those 59 years ago on the 30th of September. That's what you committed yourselves to, and you did it well. And God is very grateful to you for that. You were faithful too to the Catholic faith, and Paddy was no stranger to this church, no stranger to the church either, in St. Ida's Hospital, where he spent the last few years. Um, thank to you, members of his family, for bringing him along there to us. And I hope that all of you get great consolation today, including those who are so far away, great consolation from this Mass. We can do nothing greater for Paddy Flatton than what we are doing now, to gather and celebrate the Eucharist. Because when we do that, we are linking his death with the death of Christ, our Saviour, on the cross. And our Catholic faith is firmly anchored in the resurrection. Everything in our faith emanates from that. Our belief in the resurrection means that we go through life with a deep awareness that our true life lies beyond the grave. I often use the phrase, we go through this life with one eye on the next life. That was certainly the way of the generation that Paddy Flavin belonged to. Our liturgy today is full of symbols of hope and consolation. The Paschal candle stands here beside Paddy's body, the great symbol of resurrection, that just as light drives away darkness, Christ, by rising from the dead, drives away the power of sin and the power of death. His body is draped over with the pall. I always think that's a beautiful symbol. It recalls the christening robe at baptism, and in the, in the words of that ceremony, he was clothed in Christ. Those words taken from the baptism ceremony, and the Paul recalls that, saying to you, Margaret, and all the family, that, he, yes, you're sad, of course you're sad, that Paddy has left us, but remember, 81 years ago, in, presumably in Broadford Church, 
Paddy was christened, and therein lies our hope. Uh, all those years ago when his parents brought him as a little baby, his parents have done ever since. Probably they couldn't really, unless they were reading all the theology books, parents couldn't really realize the significance of what they are doing when they present their child for baptism. This is a huge moment. And that moment, as I say, presumably in, in Broadwood Church uh, over 81 years ago. So, and all of these things are signs and symbols of hope and consolation to you today as you are sad at Paddy's uh, departing. In the first reading which uh, Eileen read for us from the, the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, there are a number of phrases in that reading that can certainly be applied <coughs> to Paddy Flap. I fought the good fight to the end. I've run the race to the finish. I've kept the faith. Paddy Flavin surely kept faith in his Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. No matter what he was doing in life, in his work, in his family, whatever, but he was always aware that who his God was. And, and he lived accordingly to the best of his ability. We won't canonize him like all of us. He would have his already human thoughts. But he lived uh, that call to the very best of his ability. And he will be most certainly rewarded for that. And then the, the second reading which uh, James read for us um, from the prophet Isaiah. We have a beautiful picture there of heaven, uh, of a great feast, a banquet of rich food. If you be able, if you would have been able to go to mass this weekend, you would have heard, you would hear the kingdom of heaven described as a wedding feast. That image of the banquet, the feast, people gathering together to feast and celebrate is used frequently in the Bible uh, to describe what lies ahead of us in the next life. And that is the image that is used there by the prophet Isaiah long before the time of Jesus. And in the Gospel, I picked the Gospel of the Eucharist because of Paddy's fidelity to the Eucharist, to Mass. Um, like most of his generation, I'm sure, he never read the theology books, but he picked up the faith from his parents and grandparents and those around him, and he took seriously his call to pass that faith. And he did it above all, not by uh, lecturing, but by the example of his life, right to the very end. There's memories of him coming there, being brought, uh, to Mass there in St. Titus in the last few years when he was uh, hospitalized there and of course over the years uh, to this uh, church. Um, in the preface of today's Mass you will hear me uh, using the words life is changed, not ended. Paddy's life is not ended, his earthly life is ended. But his eternal life goes on and his life is changed. He now goes into eternal happiness with our Heavenly Father in Heaven. And another lovely line from the preface, when the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in Heaven. So all that consolation and hope comes then today from uh, our liturgy uh, here today. So while you're sad, we gather with great hope in our hearts, with belief that Paddy has only really begun the real life. The interest in his life, and I know that uh, uh, Jean is going to be speaking uh, at the end, and um, I hope I remember it, Jean or Joan? Joan, Joan right, I know we get her on. Uh, John is going to be saying a few words at the end, so I'm not going to go in, but you saw a flavour there of his interest 
in the symbols that were um, uh, presented. Um, there's a sense in which he never left Bradford, although you did well, Margaret, to bring him out of Bradford. And, um, <clears throat> but there was a sense in which Bradford remained his home. And you know, um, I was reminding somebody recently of something the, the, the poet, uh, Sean O'Fuela, the writer, um, his mother was from Rakil. And he said a beautiful thing. He said, Rakil is a sacred place because my mother grew up there. Broadford was that kind of place too. It's, it's a very important thing in all of our lives to have love for our native side, our native place. And Paddy certainly retained that. I had the pleasure, the great pleasure of spending two years in Broadford Parish back in the early 80s. You had taken him well out of Broadford by then, Margaret, but, um, and I know the house where Paddy was born. I, I know every house in Broadford, and, um, and I can understand his love uh, for Broadford, so I hope you understood it too. He's loved it, it's a, it's a grand old place up there, and um, it remained in many senses still his, uh, where Paddy was from. Newcastle, and he loved that too. But, um, so John will speak at the end, so I'm not going to say any more about his interest and in life and that, and um, I don't want to be stealing all the lines from John. So um, just to say again to, to Pat and Marie and the grandchildren, wherever they are across the world, that we are very aware of your extra layer of sadness today being unable to attend. It's, it's, it's sad enough to lose one of your parents but not, and grandparents, but not to be able to come because of the strange times you're in. So you're very much in our thoughts today. And um, <coughs> uh, other relatives too, apart from the grandparents, whoever across the world is uh, saying this Mass today, you are in our thoughts. I am confident that by now, Paddy Flavin has heard the words of his maker. Well done, good and faithful servant. <coughs> Please stand now and uh, for the prayers of the faithful. And I'll ask Father John to introduce and conclude them. And Lisa and Willie are coming forward to read our intercessions. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and now sits at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God always hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we now join our prayers to his. For granted and all the faithfully departed, especially all those who knew and were close to him, that God may receive them now into the light, happiness and peace of his kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Christ, Son of the living God, you raised your friend Lazarus from the dead. Grant life, peace and glory to Grandad who has died. We thank you, Lord, for the love and kindness he has given us all through his life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the family and friends of Paddy, and for all those who are mourning this day, that God may look upon you with compassion and show you his love. May the memories of the love and care that you extended to Paddy during his final year bring you consolation and peace. Lord, hear us. Many people were kind to Paddy, especially the staff of the Arcade Unit, St. Titus. We ask that God with bless and reward them for their kindness and care, Lord hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <coughs> we ask our Lady's intercession now for Paddy as we present all our prayers through her. As Mother of Jesus and Mother of us all, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <coughs> Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them all a share in your heavenly kingdom. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Please be seated now, and um, the offering you give will be presented by Bobby, Codrick, Timmy, and Britton. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. <coughs> By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, become our spiritual food. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Please stand. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be near, O oh Lord, we pray to your servant Paddy on his funeral day. We offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives your praise. For through your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and these of you, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Dyson, St. Bridget, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. <clears throat> May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Brendan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Paddy, whom you have now called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, 
and to all who are pleasing to you and are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I can't go down to wish you the sign of peace, so we pray in silence for a moment, first of all, for eternal peace, for Paddy, and we pray that you will have deep peace in your hearts from believing that he is now with his maker. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. We await a Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in you. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you. Now I call on Damien to lead us in our communion reflection. God saw you getting tired and a cure was not to be, so he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes we watched you and saw you pass away, and although we love you dearly, we could not make you stay. 
A golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best. <laughs> Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Paddy, who has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Now, before we proceed with our final commendation, we ask the four members of the family, his four daughters, I think, uh, to remove the pall, which has been draped over his body, uh, as I referred to it earlier, as uh, recalling of the christening robe and his baptism. <coughs> Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Paddy, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Paddy again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Father John will now sprinkle his body with holy water, recalling his baptism. He will also incense his body, a traditional way of showing reverence for the body which has been made in the image of God and a temple of the Holy Spirit. In your response, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Paddy, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Paddy in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother Paddy forever. May the angels lead you into paradise, may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. You be seated now for a few moments and his niece Joan is going to say a few words uh, of appreciation. <clears throat> Thank you. 
sudden, what shall I to say about a beautiful man? No matter how you knew Paddy Flavin, you immediately knew he was a friend. He was a warm and decent to everyone, though behind that smile was also a sharp and witty mind. His children and grandchildren knew this well, having received many debate lessons from him while he sat in his favourite chair by the stove. He was a man who worked hard and loved even harder, with no one as special to him as his wife, Maggie. All it took was a cup of tea from her for him to say, ah, you're a beautiful woman, thanks ma'am. The love between the two of them and shared with their large extended families, including nieces, nephews, they had a big welcome for everybody. It was beautiful to see and something he was so proud of. And we all loved him back just as much. We are so thankful to have learned and loved a man who was so mighty, so full of character. He was always great fun and great sport to be with. We thank all of you for sharing in our memory of him and in our celebration of the great man he was. May Paddy's gentle soul rest in peace. Thanks very much, John. In peace, let us now take our brother Paddy to his place of rest. 